Welcome everyone, today we'll be looking at the best craftable 4 star weapons, and those weapons are definitely there for the end game. So before we dive into the weapon comparison, let's have a look at the 4 points I have prepared for us. So the first point, we'll talk about why is a 4 star max rank weapon better than a 0 rank 5 star weapon, and this is because of the special weapon bonus. After that, we'll look at the best 4 star weapons and we'll compare their stats and also the crafting materials. Followed by that, we'll look into the importance of crafting and weekly dungeons as we get more of those 4 star weapons. Lastly, we'll look at the blacksmith crafting and I'll show you guys over 40 mineral mines location which will allow you to get a head start with collecting minerals and crafting your weapons as those minerals respawn. Now if you guys haven't subscribed, this is a really good time to join us. We have a lovely community and also I'll be looking for more news, builds, tips and locations all about the game. And you can see my previous videos were really dedicated for Genshin Impact. Now before we look into the best 4 star craftable items, you might ask, hey, why don't we just go for the 5 stars? How good is the 4 stars compared to the 5 stars? Well, let's have a comparison over here. So we're using the Kampan Bow as the comparison, which I'm currently using. The substats or the secondary stats are physical damage bonus, which is very nice. On top of that, you gain attack percentage and attack speed as you attack, maximum 4 stacks. So you can see this bow is tailored for the advanced level of archers and you know you just keep shooting your spells also scales of your attack percentage not as much as the elemental mastery but it also helps better attack speed better physical damage really helps now the base attack is a little lower at 41 to start off with if we compare to the other five star bows one starts with 45 one star with 46 so we're looking at four to five base attack difference and after that, the secondary critical rate is better than physical damage, of course, and the attack is slightly better than physical damage. So in terms of attack and secondary, the 5-star weapons are slightly better. But if you look into the bonus, the critical damage is nice, critical rate is really good, so the bonus is focused on critical build over here. That kind of narrows down your build. But regardless, it's nice to have the 5-stars over the 4-stars if you don't have those ranked up. If you compare the Aminos bow here, the increase of normal attack and also aim shot by 12 up to 24% and followed by that the damage increased by 8% for every 0.1 second that the arrow travels which is not a big factor because arrows usually don't travel for over 0.2 or 0.3 seconds. Now from playing comparison you might feel like yes the 5 stars are better, that is true. That's why the game is here to make people spend money for the 5 stars. But after getting max level on a 4 star weapon, you can see that we have 8% bonus attack and 2.4% bonus attack speed. Stacking that to 4 times, you get 32 bonus attack and also you get about 9.6% attack speed. And this is much better than the sap stats on the level 1 level. So this is when the 4 star bow actually shines and this also sets up well for progression. I'll touch in another guide because if you start to play more free to play and spend less, those upgrades with the bows and craftable items will help you a lot. But if you start to spend a lot, the only way to get more upgrades is to spend further and further because you can't really get those 5 stars for free. They must come with money. Now currently in the game, there are 10 craftable weapons and being 2 of the each type each. So there are 2 bows, 2 catalysts and 2 claymore etc. As you look closely, you start to see those special weapons actually focus on part of the character build. For example, the physical archers can go with attack and attack speed, which is one of the best bows we can craft. And after that, you can see another archer focus on aim shot and also focus on weak points. Followed by that, the mages, warriors, and you know, the casters all have a different focus. Here we can see this particular catalyst, the Mapo Mare, is going to focus on the mage or the catalyst user's damage with 8% elemental damage bonus and for maximum 2 stacks with the elemental reactions. And what if your caster is actually a support or maybe a healer with the catalyst? So what you're going to do is you're going to consider the prototype Manus, which is a very powerful item that regenerates energy for every 2 seconds and also heals the entire party for the percentage of HP. Very powerful item for the healers and support. Similarly, you're going to see the variations in types. You can see the poems, one focus on the attack damage and collecting particles, the other one will focus on the elemental skill. So they allow you to pick a different build for each of those weapons. And you can see with the one hand sword, one focus on elemental damage over here, the other one focus on gaining attack and defense per stack. 
Now, it is important to keep in mind that attack stats always reflect into damage. The attack damage, especially base attack, is also compounded into percentage attack and also into the elemental skills casting. You often see skills that says, you know, 20 or 300 percent spell damage because of the base attack and this is what it reflects so it's more better if we focus on a base attack followed by attack percentage and of course i didn't miss out the claymores you can see the claymore one is in dealing aoe damage with a chance to proc and this is because you have a high base attack but what if you need a high base attack or you want a bit of defense? So the white blind over here gives you base attack and defense, and which is something I really enjoy. Works really well on Noel because she scales with defense. In her ultimate form, Noel actually gains 40% of her defense into attack. And that multiplies on her base attack, so it kind of like compounded effect, and she hits very hard. Now, because there are only two craftable weapons for each of the weapon types, we really want to focus your playing style. For me personally, the compound bow is definitely the best bow over here. And if I'm going for a damage mage, I'll go for the elemental damage bonus, of course. But if I'm going for support, I'm definitely going for the energy regen and healing. Followed by that, I would lean towards getting higher base attack and defense over the chance of doing more attack damage. Because this also helps with the normal attack. This does help with a 50% chance, but only occurs every 15 seconds. So I'll definitely go with the base attack over here. And after that, we can look into the power arms. There isn't that many power arms user, and right now it's shelling, and later it will be shell. For me, having a normal and charge attack increase by 20%, or we can go with the after using elemental skills. So this one picks up elemental orbs, this one uses elemental skills. I prefer to go with the elemental skill because it's easier to trigger, but picking up orbs is quite fast as well, so there isn't any difference with the power arm for me. And coming over to the one hand sword, there is a clear winner for me with the base attack and also base defense with a prototype voucher. This is because a lot of the character with one hand actually scales off base attack. Yes, you do a bit more elemental damage, but ideally if you're here to support or if you're here to cast elemental skills, it's not going to be the one hand sword user, it's going to be the catalyst user. And this is why this prototype sword over here is by far the best one, and going with base attack and defense is very powerful. I'll also show those items on my characters for you guys as well. Now before anything else, here is the blacksmith. In case you guys didn't know, which I think most of us know where the blacksmith is, but what I want to highlight is the crafting features with the blacksmith. The blacksmith requires the prototype which is dropped from the weekly boss. And after that, it usually requires a crystal and also the white iron chunks. It's 50-50 for both of those. And you can see it's pretty much the same material for everything. You just have to make sure you have the weapon ready, which are the prototypes. So what's going to happen is, as we find minerals across the map, we should be collecting those minerals and not waste them. The biggest mistake I see people make, which we'll make here as a guide for this, is that people actually craft those enhancement ores instead of saving those minerals for the weapons. If you look at the enhancement ores, I actually made a mistake before I craft a lot of those enhancement ores. <laughs> that wasted a lot of the crystals. But after getting my map tagged out, so I'll show you guys my map as well. So after getting my map tagged out with a lot of mineral locations, I was able to collect them almost daily, and I was about to you know, get them over 50 again for more weapon crafting. Now that we had a look of how great those four star weapons can be, where can we get those weapon crafting materials? Firstly, we need to farm minerals, and I'll show you guys a lot of the locations I have tagged out. But before that, you should come to the weekly boss. Currently, there are two weekly boss. It's likely we'll get a third weekly boss with the coming update, and I do have a video for that if you want to check it out. So currently, you'll be guaranteed one of the weapon jobs, sometimes even two. And followed by that, if you fight a wolf as well, there is more weapon jobs. So there's five types of weapons in total, and I'll show you guys how many weapon jobs I have collected on my first week. I haven't done the boss jobs on my second week yet. So coming over here, you can see that I have two of the claymores, two of the catalysts, and two of the power arms. Funny enough, I'm actually not using those characters for now. I need the bows, and I also need the one-hand weapon. I did get some of those drop as well. There are also two other ways to get those particular prototype crafting materials. You can come to the diamond shop for both of the cities. Over here with Madrin, I believe she used to sell one of the one-hand weapon crafting. And it's over here. There you go. You can see the Northlander sword prototype over here that she sells those. You should be definitely getting those if you're looking for the one hand sword. And talking about one hand sword, there's no better example with my current weapon. I'm currently on level 60 with this weapon on refinement level 2. 
So what happens is my base attack is okay, physical damage are pretty nice. The biggest highlight is as I attack, I get increased base attack and also defense. And this is multiplied by my defense percentage and attack percentage even further. We get four stacks of that, and Jean really loves attack. The higher she hits, the more damage she deals and more heal she does. So I'm actually going for the long term and going for the end game with this weapon to the sixth rank up. We can also come to the diamond shop in Leering Harbor, and over here there's a variety of items. As you can see down here, there are four prototypes to be purchased. Other than the prototype one hand sword, all the other four prototypes can be purchased once over here. And if you're planning to craft, this is where you can start. Knowing where to find the prototype weapon crafting material, now we want to look into the mineral mines. And I have prepared my map for you guys with over 40 mineral mines location. What I'll focus on is the most precious mines and I'll highlight those. After that, you can compare my map and your map for the rest of the mines. My rule of thumb is that if I find a location with more than three mining materials, which I know they will respond, I'll put a tag down. So if you see any of the tags, that means there is at least three mining materials over there. Coming over to my map, what you can see is I generally write crystal to tell myself if I'm needing crystals, I can come over here. And sometimes over here, I can write three irons to tell myself if I need a bit of iron ore, I can come over here. The biggest highlight over here I'll go through with you guys are the crystal caves, which contain a lot of the crystals. Followed by here, there's another crystal cave. So those are the two highlight locations over here. After that, what you can see is over here, there is a big mine over here with a lot of good minerals. There's crystal, there's white iron, there's also jade, I believe. So really good mining location over here. Keep in mind, they do take about one to three days to respond. And coming over here, you can find another crystal and jade location, over five mining materials over there. And here is another small crystal location right next to it. After that, let's come over here for some really, really good caves. I'm calling this an OP cave because I was in heaven when I was mining. So this is a really good cave over here. And as you can over here, this is a jade mine over here. And after that, there's another mine for jade. Followed by that, there is small mines on the side. So this location is great for mining. And I was getting a lot of those. And as we go up with the mining materials, I do recommend coming over here for another mine. Why is that mine? It's more like a cave. So when you go into the caves, you make sure you look under and look beneath the mountains to go into the cave. So the location might be a little off compared to the entrance of the cave. There are also locations on the map which you don't actually see a lot from the interactive map. But once you get there, you can see there's quite a few things. Sometimes I tell myself there's like two white. Sometimes I say there's three white in the chest. So there's some few good things over there as we go through the map. And if you guys are short of white irons, there's a pretty nice location over here with some good white irons. I believe there's at least three or four mines over there for those irons. Now, in order to give you guys a good stream shot, what I do is I leave my screen over here and you can see this particular region. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight locations on this particular side. Now, coming to the center of the map, you can see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll, I'll stop counting. And you can kind of compare the map and look at mine and look at yours. I definitely have not found all the good locations, but I have tagged over 40 mining locations. And that should be plenty for us to get started. And finally, we have the bottom part of the map. For those I didn't highlight with you guys on the video, that means they actually have at least three mines. But those can be the iron mines, those can be the white iron mines, those can be the jade ones. I won't go through each of those in detail. I think that will overwhelm you guys. I'll also allow you guys to have a surprise as you discover those. Now, there is one special location before we jump it. I actually used the icon over here. This location is a small cave that actually responds artifacts. <laughs> I know, pretty silly, right? So I found this location to be funny enough to have a tag down. So if you come over here, you don't see any mines. You actually see a bunch of artifacts responding. Only once the artifact responding, you get five to six of those every now and then. But, you know, it's a nice location. I thought I'd take it out for us. To summarize this video. It is definitely better to have a maximum rank 4 star weapon that is tailored towards your character's build if you're going for elemental burst, base damage, or if you're going for like a bit of burst potential proc chance. And also knowing that we can consistently get the 4 star crafting materials from the weekly bosses, from the minerals, means we can always craft a 4 star weapon that is better than a 5 star. It is very important that we keep in mind we're here to play the game for the long run. Try to not rush the game, and as weekly boss comes, weekly events comes, and update will come, the most important part is to enjoy the process and explore the world to find more minerals, more food, and we're going to have a foodies guide very, very soon. I'll show you guys the best food as well. Now, if you found this video helpful, 
make sure you subscribe and also click the bell for more videos like this to come. As always, I wish you guys best of luck in catching and also have a great time exploring this beautiful world. I'll see you guys next time. Take care everyone.